in this lesson, we're really not introducing any new skills and ideas for you guys. We are just emphasizing that inverses have come up in two different ways when working with our exponential models. And we're just kind of exploring when do we use which type of inverse for an exponential equation. So where we're going to start actually is with our two examples. And I've given you both the setup and the first step for each of these. And what we really want to emphasize is how to solve each of these. So notice here uh, our variable is a t. Here our variable is an r. Um, and they're in different places in the model. So I've started just by is isolating my exponential expression. And now the way I approach these two equations is going to be different, right? So my first step was the same, but my next step for each of these is going to be different. In my top equation, I'm going to take the log of both sides. In my bottom equation, I'm going to raise both sides to the reciprocal of the exponent, right? And the reason that I'm going to do each of these is the same, right? So here and here, both moves get me closer to having my variable isolated, right? And the reason I need to do two different moves is they're, they're inverses of two different types of functions. So a logarithm is the inverse of an exponential function, and that we've been using that term broadly, but really what an exponential function means is that the variable is in the exponent. This fractional exponent here down here, and we know that that's really equivalent to a root, this is the 24th root, these are the inverse of what's called a power function, and that means the variable is in the base. Okay, so here are our two different moves we're going to use in this lesson. Um, so you've seen these problems before, you can go ahead and solve these. What I, of course, do here is divide both sides by 0.2. And then I would say that t is equal to log of this over 80, all divided by 0.2. And notice I left this all in kind of this ugly expression. Same thing here, I could be like r is equal to blah, 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 to the 1 24th power minus 1. And the reason it's useful to me to leave it alone like that is then I can type in my expression all at once into the calculator. So I'm going to go log of the fraction and then oops, close my parentheses and divide by that 0.2. And I get 17.21 years. And then same down below, I can go, uh, we'll do f my parentheses first. And then type in a fraction on the inside. And then to my fractional exponent. And then minus one on the outside. So I can type that in all together to evaluate. And the reason this is useful to me is that it avoids like rounding error. So anytime we use decimals here in exponential functions, if we round them, that error gets kind of amplified by us multiplying those numbers together a bunch of times. So we're just going to type it in like that, and we get 0.223, right? Or a 22.3% growth rate. Okay, so that's how we solve both of these, and you solved these for me already. The reason I gave you ones that we've seen already is just to really emphasize the difference between the two problems. So, in summary here, we have two different types of functions. We have something like a equals b to the x, and we have something like a equals x to the b. So if I want to isolate both of these, this one is our first case. We're taking the log of both sides, and that allows us to rewrite like that. And then here, we're doing both sides to the 1 over b power, and we get x isolated like that. So again, depending where your variable is, that changes our approach to isolating it. 